You might have just heard Leah saying, finished, it's all finished <laughs> at the Women's World Cup and England have held on and it is held on to a narrow 1-0 win to beat Denmark in the group stages. It all but sends them into the uh, knockout stage, but it was tense at the end, Leah. It was. To be fair, after Denmark's header against the post, England did what they needed to do. They managed the game. They got the ball in the corners. They wasted a bit of time, which is ultimate to see the game out. They've qualified now, so that's their job done. They've got out the group. It wasn't the prettiest game, but they did what they needed to do. Yeah, qualification will be actually rubber stamped if China fail to beat Haiti in the next game, which is at lunchtime, but pretty much six points from two games takes you through. Let's recap the game from the start. Anybody just tuning in, England brought in Lauren James to start the game and what a start she made. Oh, yeah. I mean, England as a whole, the first five minutes looked on fire. They looked electric and that's what you wanted to see, especially after the last game. It looked a bit looked a bit slow and a little bit dead. So it was a good start from England. Lauren James once again looking electric, coming in off the left, striking the ball through the ball into the corner of the goal, past the keeper. The keeper has no chance worldy of a finish uh, six minutes I think it was so it sets them up for a good game and everyone's feeling very confident lost a little bit of control after that it kind of died down obviously Kira Walsh got injured serious looking serious injured. yeah obviously we don't want to see that but things like that happen in football and I hope she's okay um they went in at half time it kind of changed the, the approach from Denmark in the second half as mm. in they maybe looked at it a little bit different in they know England have lost one of their their main players in the centre midfield and they've had to reshuffle. So it was a tough one in the second half, but they've, they've got the win. So you mentioned Kira Walsh's injury. It was a knee injury and she went down with no one around her, which is always the worst kind. It's not, it's not an impact injury. Yeah. It's, we know how serious the knee injuries can be in the women's game. How badly will that damage England's hopes for this World Cup if she's not able to come back and play? Obviously, she's a, she's a midfield maestro. She's great, Kira Walsh. I love watching her. I don't think she's been involved as much as we would like her to be in the, in the two games. Not to say that she hasn't been involved because she has been there. She works hard constantly on and off the ball. It's not good, obviously, to lose a player of that calibre. But they also have a strong enough squad to be able to replace her in a sense of bringing someone else in, giving them a, ch a chance to step up. Yeah, Champions League winner in uh, Kira Walsh. How do you think... Um... Well, we saw because Laura Coombs came on, played in midfield. Georgia Stanway slightly changed her role. Yeah. Is that is that an idea of what England might have to do if Walsh is not available to them? Yeah, I think Georgia Stanway can fit in as a six, as a holding midfielder, more defensive. Obviously, you want her going forward too, but when injuries happen, you kind of have to you have to you know make it work. So she can sit in as a six. Lauren James can also play in midfield. She doesn't have to play on the wing, so you've got a little bit of adaptability there. Obviously, Rachel Daly played at fullback today. She's been moving people around, so I guess it'll be interesting to see what she does going forward. Uh, yes, it will. The other thing to say is that it's, it's a 1-0 win, and you have to go back five games since the last time England scored more than one goal in a game. Is that a concern for Serena Wiegmann? It's hard because I feel, it, I feel it from their point of view, and it's always difficult when you're a player in the game and you're a forward and everyone's saying, oh, we're not scoring many goals and it kind of, it's like added pressure. You don't really want that. I understand you want to score more than one goal in a game, especially in these group stages, but we're still winning the game. We're mm. still doing something right. We're not playing at our best, but we're still winning. So you've got to look at the positives that way. Yes, it would be great to have more goals and to finish more of the chances we create, but I think we just need to back them right now and obviously see them progress into the next game. Yep, so let's take a quick look at uh, how things sit in the group then. England with back-to-back -back wins, back-to-back 1-0 wins. They beat Haiti in their opener and they've beaten Denmark today. So that other game that you can see at the bottom of the screen is about to kick off. China against Haiti. England will be confirmed through if China failed to beat Haiti. If that is the case, would you like to see a little bit of team rotation from Serena Wiegmann for that third game, seeing as it would be, to all intents and purposes, a bit of a dead rubber? Yeah, I would. I think there's people sitting on the bench, obviously, that train day in, day out with the girls and push them to the max. So it would be nice to see a bit of a change up and give them a minute or two in, on, in the tournament. And I think it always must be hard to go to a tournament and not really get much time. So that would be really nice. But looking at a professional point of view from Serena, do you want to change something that's working? Um, even though, yeah, it might not be the biggest game. Do you also want to upset the apple cart in the sense of like player relationships that are working right now you kind of want to improve on them to go into the bigger games so it obviously depends on what she's thinking